and welcome back to another Java by example. And today I'm gonna do some of my personal musings. Uh, I have uh, been really fascinated by different uh, machine learning techniques um, lately. And uh, when uh, I used a tool, look that up actually, um, from New Zealand. I think uh, called Weka. Uh, it's a bird and it's also machine learning uh, software uh, tooling and you can take courses on their site and I've taken one of them uh, where you can learn more about how to do machine learning and they have this tooling that you put in training data that the machine will learn from and then uh, you can put in some uh, examples that it should test on, test data, and it will actually see how accurate the different machine learning techniques are. So you can get a, a sense of how to use machine learning to solve real problems. And uh, I have also tried to use Weka for some real problems and have uh, had somewhat good resu results. But one of the uh, implementation in Weka that have been a little bit strange to me is the multi-layer preceptor, preceptor or perception, perceptron, uh, and that um, was not what I think very efficiently implemented in Weka. Perhaps it's just me. I don't really know much about how to uh, create really great efficiency in, in this method because I have not looked at it closely yet. But in my case I added a lot of data. So I have a training set of uh, about 400,000 examples and it actually crashed because the tree or, or the training, uh, or not the tree, but, but the set of the training data got so huge at, that it couldn't hold it in memory at one time. And what I see from this um, example that I, they have, uh, it's actually just uh, an amount of uh, um, floats or integers probably float, no floats, float weights in a mesh network. So it shouldn't be that huge, even in Java. So I don't know why it takes so much memory. I gave it about 12 gigs and that was not enough. So a bit weird. So I found this tutorial about uh, multi-layer perceptron and it explains how it works in mathematical terms and it also provides source code that you can look into. And I have looked at it briefly and uh, read the tutorial and I can say that the math around it is not familiar to me, but the code is really familiar. So I guess I'm more of a code person. I like to read code and understand how sequences work more than actually have formulas to, to explain math for me. Um, but to understand that we have to look at uh, a simpler network called a perceptron neural network. And the difference between these are that this is uh, a perceptron that actually takes multiple inputs and arrives at one decision because the multi-layer can actually have multiple answers to one question but this uh, perceptor network is just choosing between either that or that and it works quite simply by taking a number of inputs in this case four inputs and weight these inputs into a, a function and in the other end you get an, a Y, which is uh, the answer if it's either that or that. And in, in the case of this example, they have, uh, have, they have talked a bit about neurons and how they work in the brain. And the example they have here is colors. Simply, is this a bluish color 
or a reddish color or uh, is there somewhere in between and uh, in this uh, method you can say that it's blue if it's a high number or red if it's a low number in, in the result and uh, if it's somewhere in the middle you can say a range where you don't really know what the answer is and that's undetermined I don't know if if, uh, if this method will will actually yield that uh, but to look at this code a little bit uh, it's quite small you have uh, defined either blue is one and zero is red so if the number is closer to one, it's a blue value, and if it's closer to red, it's a one. So that's just definitions. And then they have a, a few examples here where they put in the RGB values for the different colors, and the resulting class is, class is the answer in, in uh, machine learning. And uh, then they... Uh, create some normalizing vectors and some uh, some more uh, static definitions how many input patterns there are it's 13 and the least mean square error is where you want to stop when you have a, an error rate of about zero, uh, 0 0.001 then you should stop and the training Step is a value that determines how fast the machine learning should learn so a smaller value there would take longer time and um, yeah then they have uh, this uh, AAN -A -N -N, which is the actual learning method uh, called a perceptron so they define it as an AAN and the, this gets uh, two values, the number of uh, the input values and the uh, method to use. In this uh, example they use a sigmoid which is defined on the page with a mathematical formula. Let's go back to that and see... Uh, no, it was... Uh, no, it wasn't this one. So you have three different here. You have the threshold function, the sigmoid function, and the hyperbolic tangent fun function. So if you are interested, you can read it on this page. I will link them in the video. And uh, these are the mathematical formulas. The threshold function is quite simple. It just says, is a one. Uh, and if it's larger than zero or equal to zero, then uh, then it's a value if not it's not a value so it will strip uh, away the the uh, negative values so uh, and all these functions are to normalize the values so they are closer to the values we are looking for we're looking for a value between one and zero because blue is one and red is zero. So to be able to find a value that is closer to either of those two, we need to normalize it with a function so we, we get in the ballpark, so to say. And uh, here we have uh, a while loop. So it runs until it, uh, the least mean square error is uh, divided by 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 the the current uh, mean square error uh, is larger than this value uh, 0 0.0001 so when we are closing into this breakpoint we will stop and uh, in here we just define the error and we have our counter go through the input pa patterns and this is actually just training the, the model. We uh, put the inputs from, uh, from our values here. We normalize them so they are what between one and zero. No, between uh, uh, minus uh, dot five and uh, 
dot five. So, and then we calculate the network. We uh, calculate the error from the uh, result. So how close are the input to the result value? And then we adjust the weights depending on how we actually did. And then we uh, uh, increment our counter and try again. And uh, so this will run through all the patterns. And when we reach this line here, we could take the patterns that we have and divide the error with the patterns, which will ca calculate a mean squared error for us, which is the value that we will test uh, in our while, while loop. And then we just uh, uh, increment epo uh, epochs, so we know how many times we have actually trained the mo model. And um, the uh, function down here is after we train the model, we will give the program a value for the red, green, and blue values, and it will try to recall what's the correct solution for for these values that you have given it. So this function is quite simple, or 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 the flow is quite simple. There could be things things in it that is uh, a bit strange, but uh, I think you can follow through it and understand uh, pretty much what is what it does. And um, here we have the percept perceptron, and it takes this input number and a function. So it just sets the activation function, so we know what it will use for function in in the in in the loops uh, it will actually push a number of random values into our uh, input numbers and it will pop populate these with values from minus 0 05 and the 0 05 0 0.5 so we have a a lot of floating values between these uh, edge points and then we have a function to set the input values in the calculate networks we just take the input vector uh, which is the value we want to train and we take that and multiply it with the weights in the the same uh, weight in the weighted column and uh, then we get an action value and that we will increment with all the different uh, different weights and this action value we then take and run one of these methods with so uh, we will have uh, we will give it to one of these methods and then we will return the action so we know what this calculate network will return the actual value of the this calculation which is just a multiplication of each input value with the weights and the input values are normalized and uh, so let's see here where did we get that value back it was the output here and the output from this calculate network we gave to fabs to see how far from uh, how far our input um, was from the output to get the error so i guess that our input let's see here just to see what uh, what's the definition of that so we can follow the yeah so it's from here we check the input counter hmm yeah yeah okay so we increment the in, uh, input counter for each of these loops which means that here the input counter will always 
b on the class. So we will calculate the value that we get from the calculate network and see how far from the blue and the red value it is. And then we go back to, to this one and in, in the case that we know what the difference was, we will push it into uh, adjust weights, the, uh, the error. Uh, no, the output will be push into the adjust weights and we will give it the training step and the actual value that we want to have. And adjust weights uh, goes through the input vector size and then we will change the, the weights for each uh, using the previous weights and add the training step times the target minus the output. So the target value that we want to reach minus the actual output that we got times the input vector. So that will slightly modify the, uh, the weights in, in the uh, network. And then we just have this recall, which is the same um, function that we have seen before. But it's just a simplification to do or do one of these tests in one go. So it will set each of the input vectors and calculate the network and get a value back. And that, that value will either be close to zero or close to one. So I think this, this method is quite simple to understand. It's a lot of steps, but I think it's reasonably uh, reasonably small problem with good naming so you can actually understand it. So that's uh, the simple function but if we go to the multi-layer that's a bit harder to understand because it takes a number of inputs and pushes this through a set of hidden layers and then it will arrive out at an output layer. And the input layer and the output layer could have how many nodes as you want. So you can have 400,000 input, inputs, if you like, and 300 outputs. That's no problem. And uh, just the, the accuracy of this network is in how your hidden layers are structured. And I think that's a trial and error, uh, or there could be some some math behind it, so you can actually figure out how a, a really good network should look in order to find your solution. And uh, this page has a lot of math um, and different methods, but the activation functions are quite similar and. Uh, and so on. So I'm not going to go into uh, this paper. You can read it uh, on your own if you like. Uh, just to understand the problem, uh, this uh, sample code will train on pictures. So you will get monochrome pictures with just black and white values. Um, so it's either one or zero in a grid. And then it will try to figure out what number each of these images represents. Uh, so here we have an, uh, an example of uh, different uh, values it could be. And then you push that through the, your multi-layer uh, perceptron. And on the other end, it will end up at one of these nodes, uh, nodes, either zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Uh, so let's look a bit closer at that code. I have uh, set up a repository here with uh, my own implementation. I want to do this in Java, and this code is written in C, so uh, or C plus plus. So. And I want to translate it into Java and by doing that understand it further. And uh, let's look at the main program program here. 
it start off by uh, setting up the number of uh, input values. So it will fetch some input values from the, from the user. It will check how many hidden neurons there should be and how many hidden layers. So that's neurons is the number of nodes in each layer. And then you have a number of layers. So if we go back to this picture up here, uh, each node here is a neuron, a neuron, and each row is a layer. So in this program, you can define how many neurons and layers you want. And then you will uh, give it a number of bitmaps, a training step, which we have uh, discussed, a least uh, mean square error, which we also have discussed. And this momentum, uh, that's the same as uh, the value we had before called training step. So it will actually, or it will work in the same way. We will take the momentum value and multiply it with a, a previous step in order to push the function closer to the, um, the value that we actually want to end up in uh, or end up at. And then we will set up uh, our network and we will train the network and uh, then we when the training is complete we will ask for a number and we will recall that number from the neural net so uh, i think this program isn't that uh, hard to understand either uh, there is very few steps here uh, it's much. It's very many. Uh, it's my many uh, outputs and, and descriptions and so on, but not much code. So, so the code is actually more into the neural um, code here. So here we have this multi-layer perceptron constructor, and uh, that was the first we gave here: hidden layers and hidden neurons. So we we get that and we set it here. We say how many outputs we have. In our case, we have all the possible numbers. So that's 10. And uh, for some reason, uh, he creates the reader twice here. I don't know why. Um, and then he reads the dimension from uh, the pictures and reserves memory for that. Uh, in uh, in the weights. So here he needs to reserve the value of inputs, of course, times the number of hidden layers. So he needs values to uh, represent the step from, from the inputs to the hidden layers. And then he wants um, all the hidden layers uh, values in between. So uh, you want the value of one neuron and the weight it has against another neuron. So it's actually the relationship between each neuron. So in order to create the, uh, the amount of data you need, you take it the neurons that in your network times the neuron in your network times the layers minus one. So you get the number of neurons that you have in the middle in, in all the layers. And then you want to have the same on the other side. So you want to have the relationships between the neurons and the outputs. So this will uh, allocate a, a large amount of uh, memory. And then we uh, resize, I guess it's resized uh, some vectors to the actual uh, sizes it, they need to be. So you have the input neurons, you have the hidden neurons and the output neurons. So these are just 
vectors of of the different neurons, and uh, then we ran randomize all the weights and give them values from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, and then we go down here and do this. That's for the the weights between inputs and the first layer of neurons, neur neurons, and then we will go through all the hidden layers and create all the weight, uh, set all the weights for those, and then we will go through the last layer weights from the last layer to the output layer. And then we have a destructor that will clear out all this memory. We have something that calculates the network and that will go through the um, hidden neurons and then set the hidden value for the first uh, layer and that is calculated from the input neurons and then we will uh, time that with the uh, weight between the input and the hidden layer. So uh, it's pretty much the same as we did before. So there we will calculate the first weight um, of the first layer or the first result you can say. Um, in the in the first row so there we set all the neurons uh, numbers and then we will uh, use sigmoid again, uh, again to uh, normalize these values so we will get uh, values closer to uh, yeah to zero uh, to uh, one and zero and then we go through each layer in turn, the hidden layers, and calculate each weight for them. So that's pretty much the same um, as the first uh, layer. We will go through the layer two until the end of hidden layers and calculate those. And then we do the same to calculate the output neurons. That's from the last layer to uh, the output neurons. So we will get all those numbers as well. So here we have actually calculated the whole network with all the hidden layers. And then we will, uh, we have a function here to populate input from a file number. So that's pretty explanatory. It will read a amount of data from disk. It will figure out if this neuron should either have a one because uh, the value in the image data is black or if it should have a zero if the input is white. Or you can turn it the other way around uh, depending on uh, the input. But, but the, the interesting thing is that one color is one or and the other color is zero. Um, so this will just populate the input. And then we come to the training stage. And uh, here we do the same. We will uh, keep track of our uh, mean uh, error. We will keep track of the epochs and uh, we have a counter here as well don't really know what that is and we will have the error that we will calculate for each step and here we allocate some deltas I guess that will be used when you uh, do the reverse calculation to actually update our weights and we have some temp weights that is to remember the uh, previous results, um, a buffer of weights and used to keep previous weights before modification for momentum. Yeah, that was what I said before that we will use the momentum to push the network in the direction that we want. 
and uh, then we read the image goals to know uh, if we have actually uh, ended up where we want to end up and yeah this is just to check that we have goals and here we have some uh, differences between how Windows 32 solves something and Linux uh, that's the calculation of the the mean square error and the uh, least mean square error uh, in Win32 you need to use a function as well I don't know why um, could be uh, important I guess it's because the libraries are a bit different and then we will calculate our mean square error we will run through all the training files that we know of and uh, we will populate our input uh, with the counter so that's the actual file that we want to read now so when we have done that we calculate the network and uh, we take the target okay so that's the target that we want to uh, hit so we will just fetch that value from a pointer that we have we will calculate the output delta so we will look at the last layer if we are close to how close we are to the actual result and if the value is not equal to the target see here if i is not equal to the target okay so if the value that we want to hit is not the correct value then we think that this this layer should be closer to zero and if we are closer to the target we want to give it a higher number so it should be closer to one so that's just the difference here we want to uh, skew the result in the neural network so it will actually give values closer to the results that we uh, we look at so we, we put some inputs in at this end we want when we go through the network we want to end up at the node with the value closest to one in the result so uh, this is pretty much it and we use their sigmoid to uh, normalize or stab stabilize stabilize the values here um, stabilize and uh, see here um, then we will create a look at the layers the hidden layers so here we will go through the last row and see how uh, close those were to the actual output so this is actually calculating calculating backwards just looking at the the last layer and then we go one step further and we go through each layer in turn from the next to last layer all the way through and we will calculate the deltas for those and see how close we are and then we will uh, store our weights for for the last value um, so we need to have these temp weights so we can set those as the previous result later on and then we will uh, calculate the last layer uh, weights from the hidden layer to the input values using this function here where we uh, multiply the momentum uh, this value that we give the formula how much we should push it oh we have a training step as well hmm, interesting um, so uh, the momentum is another value to push the or to try to 
shake out the value so we get the, the right value quicker. And uh, we will take the previous uh, value that we had in the, hid the input to hidden layer and we will uh, remove that amount from the actual uh, hidden uh, input to hidden value that we know now and then we will multiply that with momentum to give the uh, div give the machine learning a push so it probably will resolve quicker because the the closer we are the more correct the values will be and this value will be smaller and the further we are from the truth the value will be larger so the momentum will uh, give a larger kick so this will actually uh, end up to push you away closer to the actual value that you want to end up, end up at and then we uh, take the training step and multiply that with the delta that we uh, have calculated and the inputs that we know about. So uh, we get a new value uh, at the last input layer. Uh, so we know that weight and the difference in that weight. So we will actually go through all the layers back and update the first weights uh, with the differences that we calculate all the way back. So up here we start to look at the outputs and then we will calculate the delta all the way back to the first layer and then apply this delta to the first layer and after that we will also apply the delta for each um, each uh, of the next occurring uh, layers as well. So we will go all the way through the network to train it, then calculate the de deltas back and then apply them uh, on the other way uh, back through the network. And then we will um, store the previous weights we will uh, assign the mean square error and then we will set the error to zero again so yeah we got the error up here when we looked at how close to the truth we were and uh, then we will add our counter and start off again and uh, when we come to uh, uh, 1000 epochs or 2000s and so on, when we reach a modulus of epochs, we type out how many epochs we have uh, ran and we ask the user if uh, they want to stop execution now because they have ran through a lot of steps back and forth and then we increment the epochs later on. So that's pretty much the training, which is the interesting part. The, the recall network just takes a file number. Again, it will populate the inputs, calculate the network, and then just uh, check the output neurons to look for the winner, which value is closest to zero. No, the closest to... Uh, to one, so which is the largest number for this um, this input file number? So that's pretty much it. Now we have gone through uh, the actual implementation, and we know a little bit more about how a neural network works and how to how an implementation of a uh, multi-layer precept, uh, preceptor, preceptron network uh, looks and also how 
a much simpler perceptron neural network could look. Um, I hope you uh, thought this was as interesting as I think it is and um, I hope you uh, uh, will leave an, an interesting comment, a nice comment, uh, if you uh, know more about these functions and if you want to correct anything or if you want to uh, yeah, give me suggestions about how to uh, continue this exploration into machine learning. And uh, if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your colleagues, friends, and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. And I really hope to see you in the next one.